Because I was working a 10, 10 bucks an hour job. My wife was working like 12 bucks an hour. And I was like, how to buy Bitcoin? I'm doing it, so I'll make a video about it. And that video exploded too. Like $25,000 in a few months. Wow. Sending people to Coinbase. $10, $10 commissions just lining up. $25,000? <laughs> That's tough to it do. Was, I was like, okay, I've got six month runway. Mm. I've already got like a passive income coming in from this software. Yeah. Like at this point, why are you working at this job? <laughs> just here to like show me what to click right? yeah. and that's what i did so it's so cool spencer thanks for coming on man oh thanks for having me this, this place is awesome <laughs> yeah this is my uh very own podcast studio that i just bring with me wherever i go yeah so, mobile podcast yeah. studio <laughs> pretty cool before we get into today's episode i'm super excited to share with you a little bit about one of our sponsors on the podcast today riverside if you are a content creator or a podcaster and you're tired of your recordings with guests who sound like they're speaking with you through a tin can then riverside is for you you've all been there you're ready to do the interview you've got your questions ready your guest is all set to go and then you're internet connection is unstable message ruins the entire recording with riverside you can get rid of those internet issues and choppy audio and have clean sounding recordings effortlessly you see the interesting thing about riverside is that they record each part of the episode locally on that person's device and then they upload it to the cloud so you make sure not to miss anything even if it's the other person's fault but that's not all riverside's amazingly user-friendly interface is super easy to use which allows you to spend less time troubleshooting technical difficulties and editing your podcast and in Instead, spend more time speaking with amazing guests and getting recognized for your valuable content. It can be used for podcasts, video interviews, video marketing, panel discussions, talking head presentations, and live broadcasting. And not only does it just record all of those things, it has a ton of other built-in features that make it a no-brainer for podcasting and video. Things like AI transcriptions, editing a video by removing text, AI clips, captions, and an awesome short form video editor built right in. And they even recently came out with a feature that auto edits the long silences out of your podcast to the perfect length. It really is your all-in-one online video and podcast studio. And if you need more convincing, Gary Vee, Guy Raz, and Ali Abdal all use Riverside for their content and podcasts. But the very best part is that I've teamed up with them to get you guys 50% off any plan. And to get that discount, all you have to do is click the link below and enter the code It's Keaton at checkout. Thanks so much, Riverside, for sponsoring this episode. And with that said, let's get started. Well, I was super excited to have you on because most of the time we interview agency owners or like people using high level from a SaaS perspective, but you um, not only have a long history in the internet marketing space, but you've done it in a, a way that most people would be super interested in doing, which is like kind of the solopreneur model where one person business, like that's all the rage right now. And you've done it, but you're just like, you're so low key and casual about it. <laughs> um, and I think it's just because you enjoy it and you have a lot of like very specific goals for your life that are based around family, et cetera, which I think a lot of the audience will um, resonate with. So I'm excited to talk about all that today. Yeah. Let's, uh, that you described me well, <laughs> that's me. <laughs> so, uh, let's go back to, uh, college. I think you bought your first home or was like a duplex, right? Was that your first like financial freedom move? Um, it's my first smart financial freedom. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, my, my, my beginning just, just probably a year before that was reading rich dad, poor dad. And, okay. and that was the mindset change. Right. Um, so even, I think a lot of people read that and there's not, most of what you read doesn't apply technically, right? Like what you're not going to do what he's doing, mm -hmm. um, what Robert Kiyosaki's doing, but, um, the book, if you haven't had the mindset shift yet, that book will do that so well for you. So that shifted my mindset and got me looking all over real estate stocks uh, you know, looked into crypto, probably should have bought a little back then, but didn't have any money. And uh, and in the end, I, I bought that. We started to get into that real estate and starting into stocks. Those were kind of the two that I was doing. And so mm -hmm. uh, the story I always tell is I had $10,000 saved up, me and my wife together. We went to go get ready to buy this duplex because um, it's really smart to buy a duplex while you're in college. Uh, you don't have to, right? You can get really good loan terms. All this stuff is really smart to do. And we took that $10,000 down payment and it was like a 30 day, 45 day window before we closed. Right. We knew we had the house, we had everything. We had the money sitting there and I'm reading books and, um, these stock market books are like showing me these, like, you know, jump in, jump out in like three days and make money. And I'm like, that is what you do. And I've never had money to actually even try this before. So I'm like, I got $15,000 sitting in my bank account. Right? <laughs> I'm going to try it. So I try to do like these day trading, things with this ten thousand dollars and you should look up black mondays and i'm pretty sure it's called it's okay. named, it's it was 2008 
18 or 16 in October, there was some big that event, was the day China or something. Yeah, you could like restart. I can't remember the exact day, but I think it's called Black Monday because some big thing came out of China right as I got into all this. And oh, I lost no. like two of that $10,000, two or $3,000 like overnight. Woke up Monday down like 20, 30%. I'm, like, I'm out of here. So I sell everything. Now I don't have enough money for the down payment on the house that we're buying in like three weeks, right? We've already been approved. And uh, I'm trying to think of how it all played. In the end, we had to go. We had to go mooching and begging to parents and stuff like that. Like, hey, mm-hmm. we need like a little bit more for the house. I don't think I told them why. We didn't quite have enough, but they helped us out. Anyway, I always say real estate was my first smart decision oh, that I did. <laughs> and they allowed you. What was like the pricing on that duplex? Do you remember? Oh, man. Uh, yeah, it's two two hundred twenty thousand for a duplex in Utah. Oh, man. I just looked it up like a couple of weeks ago, and it's like five something now. Wow! And we sold it, so don't own okay. it anymore. And they were letting you like use the future rent of that towards the mortgage, right? Yeah, so that's why it's so smart to buy a duplex when you're in college because I was working at 10, 10 bucks an hour job. My oh. wife was working like twelve bucks an hour. I was part time. Like there was no way we should be approved for a loan, you <laughs> yeah. know. Um, but but it already had tenants um, downstairs paying I think a thousand bucks a month, and we were able to use seventy five percent of that, so seven hundred fifty bucks a month. They kind of wipe out of your mortgage, you know, in their mind. Yeah. Which, which made our mortgage much more reasonable and we could get approved for it. So cool. All right. So now, like how long had you been married at that point? That was 2016, so three years. Okay. So you guys have been married a while. You're like, okay, time to make some moves. Were you like about to graduate and so excited about like providing for your family or what What motivated the jump into stocks and real estate and rich dad, poor dad and all that? Yeah, that was so we we moved to Hawaii. My wife was in, uh, she was doing a major in family studies, I think okay. it's called. And so we we moved to Hawaii for her to do an internship. She was working with the Head Start program, which like works with preschools and stuff. And so we did that for her, but we got there in January. And uh, if you're anything like me, like, it's always been like easy to get a job, right? Like, yeah, wherever we go, I'll just get a job and we'll mm-hmm. do that. And I could not get a job in Hawaii. Like, hmm. I, I still like look back, like, why couldn't I get a job? Like, <laughs> I'm not looking for the big guy. I'm looking for like McDonald's, you know, give yeah. me something. No one will hire me. Uh, there's like cultural things there people want, oh, okay. you know, it's travel. Um, there's a lot of things behind that, but could not get a job anywhere. Um, I was doing Mechanical Turk. You ever hired yeah. that? Um, you do these like tiny, insanely boring tasks mm-hmm. for like three cents, right? Like I need someone to do this 700 times to like Google search this and type oh. in like whatever word pops up first or something, you know, type that <laughs> in this Excel sheet. So I'm just doing that and making like six bucks an hour in like the most dreary work you could imagine. And that was a Hawaiian employer. You just found it online. That was just found online. Yeah, it's called Amazon Mechanical Turk. It still exists. Wow. I wouldn't recommend it. Right. There's a, <laughs> about 10 million better ways to make money. Uh, but I was like feeling like I was doing something. And then uh, kind of in the middle of that uh, is when I was like, okay, like I can make some money online. But there's gotta be better ways. Um, and I was reading Rich Dad Poor Dad on the beach every day. I'd go read like an hour or two of Rich Dad Poor Dad on a beach. And, and that was, that was when it all was like, okay. Um, and I was probably two years into school at that point. And that was like the big click for me. Like, I don't feel like, I don't actually don't feel like it was a mindset shift. It was like Mm. a, a realization of the mindset I'd had (laughs) and and I was like finally stepping into it. Right. Yeah. Okay. So. What was your goal then? Like, were you like, I'm going to retire in 10 years or I'm going to make 10K a month? Like, what was the, were you thinking super far in the future at that point? Uh, that's a good question. I think my goal was to be job free. Okay. So I hadn't even had a real job yet and I was already done. It. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's the goal, relatable. The goal was to not have a traditional job. Okay. And you get back from Hawaii a couple years, you know, you get to buy the house. What happens next? So, yeah, we live in this duplex after we get back from Hawaii. And I work at a, a local startup. It's called Dark Energy, four or five employees, and learned a ton there. So I was their director of marketing. Mm. Uh, you know, out of the four employees, that was my job. And uh, maybe that's why the bank was able to give me a loan. You know, oh, he's a director of marketing. <laughs> this guy's legit. Uh, but did that part time. And, and just that's when I like learned just tons about marketing, right? You're the only marketing guy there. So I'm learning. Mm. You know, I'm running our blog, YouTube channels, Twitter, visual stuff, like just everything, websites. And uh, just getting through school and got done with school and started at a, at an SEO agency, so called 97th Floor. That's actually only a couple miles from here. Um, and that was when I really was like, okay, I got to get a 
now I really don't want a nine to five job. <laughs> like, yeah. Now I quickly realized what that entailed and, and they're an awesome company. Like it just was me not fitting in, not, not this company or their yeah. culture or anything. Um, they also give what's called, what, what do they call it? hundred percent free time or free time off PTO. Oh yeah. Yeah. They have a word for it now, but, but there was <laughs> free time. <yeah. laughs> Tell me you've never had a job yeah, without telling me you've never had a job. It's been a while since I was in that world, <laughs> but essentially you could have a you know PTO as much as you want. You take yeah. as much as you want. And so that would, that gave me a taste of it too. Like, wow. Like we went to Thailand for like 10 days. No one even asked questions. You know, I don't have to well, be like, okay, can I take my two weeks or whatever? That's ahead of their time. It was. Yeah. yeah that's this is like seven more years common ago. today, but yeah. Crazy. And so that was, and I'd, I'd leave at like three 30 every day or just like whenever I want, you just get up and leave really cool culture. Um, but it bad for me or good for me because it let me taste what freedom was. And mm-hmm. I was like, Ooh, I really want this. Uh, so I started blogging. We, we were doing blogs for other people. And just a few months into that, I was like, I can do a, a blog, right? I know a ton now about blogging. And um, so I started to run my own blog. And that was kind of my turn into uh, my own, like a, a side hustle entrepreneur stuff. Mm-hmm. And the blog was about affiliate marketing or side hustles? or No, I was so good at stock trading at that point, oh, obviously, okay, cool. that I did a blog about <laughs> stock trading. <laughs> Little did we know you were a fake <laughs> stock trading guru. I I figured I'd lost four grand. I could now teach people. Um, No, I was just into the stock market. I like liked the idea of it, you know. And so Uh I made a blog about. uh, It's called BeginningStockTrader.com. Okay, I'm going to teach beginners how to get started in the stock market. Totally unqualified. We all do this, right? (laughs) Like when we first go out there and start a blog or start something, we're like not qualified for it. But hey, guys, just jumping in here to give you a quick word on our sponsor, High Level, before we get back to the interview. If you don't know already, High Level is the top sales and marketing solution for any business, but particularly agency owners or anybody that needs a software product to resell to their existing customer base. It has everything you need to capture, nurture, and close leads for marketing clients. And the best part is High Level believes in not taxing the agencies on its platform so you can get unlimited clients for one low flat monthly fee. The best features include a CRM, funnel, website and email builders, course hosting platform, robust marketing automation builder, a consolidated chat stream with WhatsApp, email, SMS, Instagram DMs, and Facebook DMs, reputation management, social media posting, tracking and analytics, and so much more. And as if that wasn't enough, High Level is fully white labeled, meaning that you can take the platform and put your own brand on the desktop and mobile app and resell it to your industry for whatever price you want. Essentially, what High Level has done is brought the bar for starting a software company way lower so normal people like you and I can help our clients with an amazingly robust software without paying hundreds of thousands of dollars in development costs. I am not kidding when I say hands down high level is my favorite software of all time. It has been integral to my success with my agency. It helped me increase my clients results and retention and I use it every single day for my own business. And if you sign up for high level today, not only will you get a 30 day free trial, which is not available on their website, but you'll get all of the bonuses listed at itskeaton.com forward slash mastermind, which gets you support templates and courses to kickstart your high level journey and get those first few clients or scale to your next few clients. If you're already a high level customer, you can also get all of those bonuses by upgrading to the next highest plan underneath my link. Instructions for that are also at itskeaton.com forward slash mastermind. Uh, so yeah, beginning stocktrader.com. I, I did Instagram. I did a YouTube channel uh, and little, little like niblets of success along the way but nothing mm-hmm. big okay and you had like affiliate links or how were you monetizing it AdSense? yeah so initially the blog I, I put a ton of time into that blog so my wife worked evenings and i worked days wow and so i'd come home at three i'd see her for like an hour and then she'd be gone and i'm like six hours right mm-hmm. and so i i worked that whole year i'd work probably four or five hours a day on that blog thousand hours probably on it and put out hundreds of blog posts handwritten and I think I probably made 500 bucks off affiliate links, right? A few of those, like I think best stock trading books, I think was the one that I actually finally managed to rank for. Made a couple bucks a day off that. And then, uh, well, let me think. Uh, so yeah, the real success there came when I started uh, an Instagram slash YouTube channel. So I was like, okay, blogging, I was warned it was hard, but blogging's really hard. Right? It's still really hard. Like mm-hmm. you gotta work forever for nothing. To really start seeing anything, and uh, so I, I got on Instagram, and that was back when I don't know, maybe you, maybe you tried this back when you first started. It's uh, follow and follow. Yeah, yeah. You follow and unfollow people. Oh, so you yeah. go, you use these bots, you follow like fifty thousand channels, 
And then some of them look and like, who's this guy? And they follow you back. And then you go and unfollow all of them like a jerk, right? Yeah. <laughs> I got all these followers. <laughs> so I watched a YouTube video. It said, do that. That's what I did, right? And uh, I got some followers. And then I had this little like, I would send them like a welcome message. Hey, thanks for following me. You should check out this little mini course, right? And the mini course was just like, I made three YouTube videos that kind of helped you set up your stock trading account, uh, learn like the really basics and stuff like that. And and kind of pointed you in some affiliate links in other directions. And uh, so I was doing that, and my Instagram account got shut down, as it should have been, right? Like, mm-hmm. it's pretty easy to see what's going on on Instagram's end. Yeah. Like, I'm so sneaky. Like, yeah. Uh, so Instagram account got shut down. We had a baby, and you could call that my, like, low moment. I wouldn't call I wasn't, like, devastated, but it was just like, oh, this sucks. I'm out, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, life's busy. I'm done. <laughs> And then, like a few months later, I uh, we have this baby, and I'm, I'm getting, I start getting these emails for commissions. Like, oh wow, my blog's taking off, and I go look, and like, no, your blog's not taking off. I'm like, my Instagram's <laughs> taking off. No, my Instagram's not taking off. And I'm like, where am I getting money from? And uh, this is like it's funny. This is like story of my entrepreneurship journey. I feel like is like the accidental wins are always my yeah. wins are always on accident. Mm. My YouTube channel. Had uh, that I had uploaded those three videos that I was kind of spamming people with from Instagram to YouTube, and one of those videos was taking off. Wow, uh, wasn't even planning on it, right? But it, but that's that was YouTube, especially back then, and it was a lot easier. And so, uh, YouTube video was getting like eight thousand views a day or something, wow. and and uh, and actually making me money. And it was I can't even remember something very big. I was like. How to get started in the stock market or stock market terms or best stock brokers. I can't remember one of those. Is it three. still online? Um, yeah, it should be. The, right. the channel has changed now, but you can go find the first three or four videos on that channel. That's the Wealth Hacks channel. Wealth Hacks channel. Wow. Look yeah. at that. Humble beginnings. Humble beginnings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that was when I was, I, I turned pretty hard to YouTube at that point because it was like, tried so hard, failed, tried so hard, failed, didn't try, won. <laughs> you know, yes. like this. <laughs> yes. And I do a lot more YouTube now. Okay. That's so cool. So the commissions coming in, were they like significant money? It was like a thousand a month or... Yeah, it was, um, it, 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 the, the chart kind of looks straight up and straight down like a giant mountain. So mm. thousand bucks, it was like more than a thousand bucks, but just for like a month or two. And then the video died. Um, I'm, I'm trying to remember it was, yeah, it was like $80 commissions. That was why I picked the stock market world oh, wow. because you make, when you send someone to a stock broker, they know they're going to make a lot of money off that person. You make a lot of money in turn. So yeah, I made, I made really good for a few months on that, on that channel. Cool. And then was it recently or pretty quickly after that that you found the ClickFunnels world and started promoting them? That's, no, I think it was like a year or two. So I was kind of pittering around on that channel for like a year or two. Okay. Didn't still working at the SEO agency. Yeah, I was okay. still working at the SEO agency. Um, well, I think at that point I'd quit. I only worked for a year there and then I moved into an in-house marketing agency. Um, and I... Yeah, still kind of like bummed with it all. It's still kind of like now that I've seen some success trying out YouTube videos, and I'm trying to remember, I had one more mega success on that channel, and that was how to buy Bitcoin. Mm. And I'm trying to remember, there's a similar story where I was kind of like, it was like an accidental. I was like looking into it all, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to go buy some Bitcoin. And I was like, oh, I should just learn. I should upload like a video on how I did it to my own channel, right? Because crypto, crypto and stocks are kind of the same. Yeah. Maybe my audience will be interested, right? Because I put out five videos so far. It's, I have yeah, an audience. Your right? audience is like <laughs> my, my <laughs> 50 subscribers. They all love me and know me. Yeah. Um, but again, it was like more accidental than like me researching and like coming up with a plan. I was like, how to buy Bitcoin? I'm doing it. So I'll make a video about it. And that video exploded too. Like hmm. uh, way more than than that other one. Um, like $25,000 in a few months. Wow. Sending people to Coinbase. $10, $10 commissions just lining up. $25,000. That's tough to it do. big money. That's it, tough on that level of commission. It happened. So now I know the timeline here. You might remember when Bitcoin like had a huge spike four or five years ago. Mm. Right around Thanksgiving time, everyone's like talking about it at Thanksgiving. Um, I ranked for how to buy Bitcoin on YouTube and Google. My YouTube video ranked for like six months, and that's where, where it all came from. Wow. Um, but it was like, I mean serious money especially for someone in my situation right yeah that's crazy um so another another accidental win for me and, and that video probably took you like 20 minutes a straight screen share <laughs> again that's still on there you can go watch it and it's just like i'm gonna show you how to buy bitcoin right <laughs> like 
slow talking. Oh man, it's bad. <laughs> I don't know why it ranked. I mean, it ranked tons of people were making videos like that, right? Like, yeah. Even today, I look back and like I don't get it, but yeah, sweet. Just uh, <laughs> catches the algorithm. Something about not like not being overproduced. Sometimes I feel like I think it is, especially for tutorial type channels, right? Yeah. Like when someone like jumps in your face and like hyped up, and you're like. I'm just here to like show me what to click, like, <laughs> yeah. and that's what I did. So it's so cool. Okay, so you you have that success, and then well, you're like doubling down on stocks at that point, or how did you get into the internet marketing world eventually? Yeah, so I, I told you I worked in house at a marketing agency, and they wanted to uh, try out ClickFunnels, and so they said, "Okay, um, let's look at this." It was Click an, another software. marketing agency, or you're working in marketing? Oh, sorry, to say agency. I'm working in house at a marketing. I'm doing marketing at a. It's it was like, like a, a 3D software modeling company. Yeah, Again, I'm the okay. director of marketing. Yeah. Six employees. These are the guys that spent like 200000 on Google yeah. Ads without a single <laughs> yeah, return. We'll talk about that. <laughs> um, I'm doing in-house marketing, and they're like, we, we want to try out ClickFunnels. Can you figure it out? I'm like, yeah, I'll figure it out. So I'm kind of testing, playing around with ClickFunnels, and uh, Russell Brunson, who's the CEO of ClickFunnels, is launching his new book right about that same time called Expert Secrets. And uh, so they start sending me these emails about like, did you know that you can make commissions? And I was like, oh, I've like dabbled in affiliate marketing and like had some miniature successes. And and so I, uh, on the side, I'm like, I'm going to start, I'm going to try to make some YouTube videos about this Expert Secrets book and stuff. And uh, somehow, again, I start a new channel because it doesn't make sense anymore to be like, hey, you guys like Bitcoin? You should read this book about marketing. <laughs> I was like, okay, I got to start something new here. So that's where the Buildapreneur channel comes in. Okay. Uh, you know, it's like two in the morning and you're in you're in a domain name registrar, like <laughs> entrepreneur.com. No. <laughs> Entra pro build up pro Spencer. No. Like, <laughs> oh man. And so Buildapreneur was like the ninety third okay. option. And all right. At that point you're like, Yes, go. <laughs> and now you're stuck with and it. Now I'm stuck <laughs> with it. Yep. Been with it ever since. But uh made that channel and I did really well with that Expert Secrets launch. Mm -hmm. Again, like, why am I doing so well with this? Um, just some videos about it. And um, it's kind of a fun story because I Expert Secrets is, is doing their thing. And I start to see my name on, like, the top 20 for that launch, top 20 affiliate promoters. And, mm -hmm. and uh, just from some YouTube videos and stuff. And so then I kind of, like, wow, the winner gets to go to ClickFunnels headquarters. They get to meet um, Entrepreneur on Fire, JLD, uh, mm. John, Lee, John Lee Dumas. Yeah, it rings a bell. <laughs> Before my <laughs> time, <laughs> big guy, big guy. He runs a podcast, Entrepreneur on Fire, huge podcast. Okay, like, this yeah. is cool. Um, and so I start just like telling everybody, like family and friends, like you got to buy this book. Go click this link, buy the book. I'll reimburse you, right? So ClickFunnels or ClickFunnels was paying out ten dollars commissions for anyone that bought the book. Uh -huh. The book was nine dollars, so I'm like, go buy this book for nine dollars. I'll give you a ten dollar bill. <laughs> Greatest day of your life, right? You earn a dollar. So I'm going around all over just telling people to do that, and I end up in the top ten. And you did it. You like stood outside the oh, like yeah. basketball <laughs> arena, right? Uh, the the Marriott School of Business at BYU, <laughs> yeah, so a, a local college. Yeah, like, hey, here's a ten dollar bill. Or, I think at that point they were offering twenty. They were doing like a last two day push, and it's like twenty dollars per person that buys the book. And I was like, it's an eight dollar book. <laughs> so I'd like sitting out there, like twenty dollar bills. Buy this book, and I'll give you this twenty dollar bill. <laughs> Desperate. <laughs> Or or you any, you, so you made a couple of videos, but most of your promotion was like grassroots like this? No, no. This was just kind of like the final like okay. push because they're 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 doing like the final like top 10 go on, you know. And I'm like, well, I got nothing left in the tank, you know. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I don't have an audience. I don't have anything. So that was kind of like my just try to push me over the edge. Did you take off work or you just like you told your um, wife like I'm done with work, but I'm Saturday. Okay. I might have taken off work. <laughs> I, can't, I can't remember how, like, how I ended up doing that. It was only for one day. It wasn't like, it's oh, like okay. I'm out there every day with a sign, you know. Yeah, it's yeah. like just kind of like thinking of different things to, yeah. to get 30 or 40 more signups. But I did get, I mean, I got everyone in my office, you know, $20 bills, buy this book, buy this book. And um, so that was my first big win. I built a preneur channel and kind of like suddenly people knew my name. It was mm. like, oh, wow, he was in the top 10. Who is this guy? And um, I think that helped a lot moving forward from that, having some name out there. Okay. So you, what were you, like one or two? Like nine or ten. Uh, okay, all right. <laughs> I think it was Tony Robbins and John Lee Dumas at number one and two. Okay. <laughs> Different world. <laughs> got it, got it. And you, this like scrappy kid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and I'm like, seriously the most random human being. And everyone's like, who are you? <laughs> I am nobody. <laughs> um, okay, so then you get to go see Entrepreneur on Fire and you meet Russell and all them. Uh, yeah, met Russell and, and kind of, I think I, I think I made pretty good commissions off that too. Even after all the payouts, I think I made 
decent money. Cool. And then you were like, software is is the game here, right? Yeah, it kind of like it's like these like these moments, right? Like rekindle your flame. I think it had fizzled a little, mm. and I was putting out a movie a month or every couple months on my other channel, and I was like, yes, I win. And like a huge, and it was just really cool to be around all those people, right? Entrepreneur on Fire at the time is making. I think he was said he was making like a hundred grand a month with ClickFunnels commissions alone. And that's his side hustle, right? Like he's doing his podcast and he's telling people about ClickFunnels on the side sometimes. Mm. Like, and he's making a hundred grand a month. And so just being in the room with people, a world that I'd never even like come close to, right? Never. Mm. It was all just hustles for me and kind of playing yeah. around. And these guys are making real, real, real money, right? They've got like own their own businesses and stuff. And so... um it was eye opening that wow, you can build something quite real just having an audience. Hmm. And then it was you. You started promoting ClickFunnels at that point as your main like driver of affiliate revenue. Super hard, yeah. So that Buildpreneur channel I had a couple videos, and then I just I made like thirty videos about ClickFunnels, like everything you could imagine, how to get started, what it is, reviews, everything. And uh, at some point, it was like ten videos in YouTube kind of like identified me as an expert. And they're like, wow, this guy seems to know what he's talking about with ClickFunnels. He's very into ClickFunnels, right? Maybe they're like, wow, this guy is like a little too into ClickFunnels. <laughs> Make another video, dude. Um, but made like 30 videos and started to get re like good commissions at that point. Um, mm. So probably six months of that got me to $5,000 a month with just nice. YouTube on ClickFunnels. And and that was the point I was just saving up the money. And, and that was kind of the point where I was like, oh, I can quit my job. I'm, I'm making the same amount. Mm. And I'd been saving up my money. So I had like forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 just sitting there. And it felt, I'm super conservative. And so I was like, okay, I've got six month runway. Mm. I've already got like a passive income coming in from the software. Yeah. Like at this point, why are you working at this job? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. So luckily my wife was down and we left. Nice. Uh, it's their fault for getting you on ClickFunnels in the that's first place. That's what I say to all the jobs. Like, don't teach me so many good <laughs> skills and stuff. I'm like, this is on you. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And this whole time is your wife, like, like you come to her with the $25,000 in Coinbase commissions. And you're like, look at this. She's just like, cool. Like, or she's super excited. <laughs> uh, my wife doesn't care about money. Yeah, she's, <laughs> she's funny like that. Um, yeah, she's like, cool. It's great. Yeah. And, and for her... You know, for me, I'm like, I'm quitting my job. I'm out of here. And for her, it's like, I'm still going to probably do what I, the same thing, you know, you yeah. have to be nice to have you home. Mm -hmm. Probably not really, but <laughs> she's like, oh no, he's home all day. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, she, um, she's liked it more and more. I think, I think in the beginning it's hard for her and for me, honestly, to like really see how awesome not having that nine to five in place is, right? Like mm. you're like, this, this is such a cool idea. And then when you actually see it, I think we both are like, oh, this is, yeah. this is incredible. Yeah. I'm ruined, man. Like yeah. I'll never, I've ne <laughs> never had a real job, <laughs> never not worked from home. Um, my, my college dorm, dorm was like my first home, but yeah, I really like, I will, I would struggle so hard in yeah. a, a nine to five environment. Well, I would take a massive drop in income yeah. to stay at home. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Um, okay. So you go full time and it's just like another 30 click funnels videos at that point. Uh, maybe a few more somewhere in there. I start kind of like branching out. Uh, by sole reason of I'm out of ideas. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and and so things start to kind of roll. Like it's kind of nice, right? Like you, you, when you're into this kind of stuff, you have wins, you have little wins, blah, blah, blah. And then eventually you get momentum. And right there mm -hmm. probably was the momentum point where um, when I got on that Expert Secrets leaderboard, people are starting to come to me and I'm starting to um, get a, a little bit of a name for myself. And so that's when I think I launched my first course um, on, on affiliate marketing, just like, here's what I'm doing, right? The small, it was a mm. pitiful course, I'm sure. Like 997? I, it was like, no, no, 67. Oh, okay. $67. All right. And the nice thing is they got, that was Affiliate Secrets 1.0, I called it, and I said you get unlimited updates. Mm. And it, so as I continue to release bigger and bigger courses, they've, all those original buyers got you know, the 1497, the, the 1997 course, they all got those updates. So the people that believed in me in the beginning... <laughs> Good investment. Uh, I'm sure they were disappointed <laughs> on that first round, but it got better. Um, yeah, so I, and then I just started to kind of, I, I did like click funnels, like online business kind of stuff, right? Like how to run Facebook ads, kind of that that little world, and uh, and then eventually ran out again. And at that point, I switched my whole like online persona from I'm teaching you how to market, which is what I was doing when I was pushing click funnels, right? I was teaching business owners. 
how to do SEO, how to use ClickFunnels in their business, make funnels, run ads. And I switched because now everyone was following me to learn affiliate marketing. It felt like not that. Yeah. And so I switched my channel. I switched my branding. Everything was like affiliate marketing. And that's when Buildpreneur logo before was like two blue squares and like just something classy. I think I hired a okay. designer and I was like, I want classy. I'm in the business niche, right? It's, it's like the business light, niche. Light, yeah. I love that. <laughs> it's this color actually. Yeah, it's yeah. like light blue. Okay. And just really boring and like, and I was like, I feel like marketing is much more like it's solopreneurs. It's people that want to enjoy life and be exciting, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, MMO, make money online. It's it's just a more fun world. So that's when we switched to the me sitting in a hammock and I kind of built my branding around a guy in a hammock, which is much more fun, much cool. more fun to talk about and make videos yeah, about. Love it. Um, and then you had some pretty. You, you got up to like being the top ClickFunnels affiliate of all oh. time or one of the top? Um, I was the top of all time at my time. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure I've been beat now, but at one point in yeah. history. Cool. Yeah. And what did that feel like? Like you were, what was the, the highest month, if you can say? Um, yeah, I mean, I had like $150,000 a month somewhere in there. Wow. I mean, to be, in full disclosure, we, we were doing um, paid ads as well. So at some point, as I started to grow with the YouTube, I started to reinvest mm -hmm. and put that into paid ads and expand. So I think I made $150,000 one month, but I spent the entire $150,000 on ads or something close wow. to that. Okay. Yeah, it was a really, a really big, I mean, there was a period where I was just dumping money back in there, right? Like, grow, grow, grow. This is great. At some point, I won't be able to do this anymore. And so mm -hmm. um, at, at some point, the ads turned off and we were able to kind of enjoy that money again. Okay, cool. <clears throat> so like your highest profit month. Highest profit month was probably still in the, the hundreds, so hundred cool. and something. Nice. And then it just kind of like has slowly went down. Yeah, as I, as I moved into teaching more affiliate marketing, I talked mm -hmm. less and less about click funnels, uh ran you know, my my paid ads stopped for the most part and um and so yeah, it kind of started to fizzle. <laughs> okay. Um and what is your framework for affiliate marketing? Like what's what's the 5 minute or less pitch for somebody who's you know, relatively savvy online but wants to get into the affiliate world? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> affiliate marketing in the end is just about having an audience, right? Like, if it doesn't matter how you do it, you build up an audience, and you build up access to a large number of people, and and you can make money. I always say it's kind of like part of like it should be part of a bigger picture. You can make courses, you can do whatever you want, but it's really just having influence over a large number of people. And so, for me, affiliate marketing is <clears throat> working backwards. Um, there's two pieces. There's a conversion system, which is where you uh, you capture emails. And you create a way to make money off those emails, right? Mm -hmm. um, in, in my case, an automated way if possible. Um, but basically some system that basically monetizes your audience. And then it's got the the audience building side of the foot marketing. And that's, uh, for me, creating content, right? That's the free way. So TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, whatever it is, you put out content uh, that's, that attracts a certain kind of person. Uh, that you're going for, and then you send the people that watch your content and enjoy it and vibe with it and vibe with you, right? You send them to your conversion system, and your conversion system kind of captures them and makes them, um, it gives you access to them for forever as long as you can hold their trust and and things like that. And uh, you make money, for me, pretty passively if your conversion system is built in the right way uh, from then on out. And uh, all I really did for years as an affiliate was after I created my conversion system, I just made content all day. That's like the only thing I did. I was just a content creator. Everything else was in place so I could just spend 99% of my time putting out YouTube videos, TikTok videos, things like that. Hmm. And the conversion system is basically just emails, right? Yeah, so um, super simple lead magnet. You find something that, that everyone who's watching your type of video is looking for, uh, some hole in their life, right? You create some small lead magnet around that you capture emails if i did it again i would capture phone numbers too if i'm being honest that's mm -hmm. kind of one of my big i think mistakes looking back um but but capturing that email or phone number access to them and then um it's just a mix of automated emails that sell them things and then i'll do once every couple months uh a full launch something whether i'm promoting someone's product that's doing a product launch like tony robbins um, is doing something big in the next few weeks um, with mastermind.com so something big where I'll push that or I'll just have uh, in the in-between just kind of automated emails going out saying, if you're interested in blogging, right, this, it's a side hustle that works. Here's the best blogging training out there. If you're mm -hmm. interested in this, and I'll kind of just move them through it. I see. 
Um, and um, no, I forgot what I was going to ask. Uh, Asking questions is the hard part. <laughs> I answering them, I just have to <laughs> say whatever comes to my head. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I can't remember now. Okay. So do you find that your list ever gets confused? Like you're promoting so many different things. Maybe they're opting into like a side hustle list. And so it makes sense that you're talking about a lot of different things, but have you noticed that or, cause I, I, that was a big concern of mine for a long time. And then I just sort of realized like everybody's on a little bit different path and you never know what's going to land with whom. Is that the way you look at it or? Yeah. It, at one point it got messy where it's like, why are you talking about this? Right? Like mm -hmm. you're, that's not who you are. Right. And <clears throat> Kind of like you said, one thing I did is split up my list. So I've got the general side hustle people that came in for like, like a lot of these guys just came in looking for a list of 97 of the best side hustles, right? Mm. So I can promote anything to these guys, right? Yeah. Some people came in just through, through affiliate marketing. So I segmented those guys like they're, they're very specifically looking for one way to make money, right? Yeah. Um, And <clears throat> kind of what I do now is I'm just a lot more picky about what I'll promote. Okay. So I, I get these people reaching out and it's like, hey, I've got this marketing product, right? Like this great software, this great marketing training, and it is great. I'm like, that's, it doesn't make sense for who my audience is now, right? I've got affiliate marketers, and I've got like stay-at-home side hustlers looking to make 500 to 1,000 bucks a month. Your training's great. It's not going to work with either of these guys. And you yeah. kind of learn that the hard way. Like you, you put out this huge blast to like 50,000 people, and you get one sale, and you're like, yeah, okay. <laughs> like, that wasn't worth all that effort, you know, for that one sale. Yeah, I had one when I was running my agency, like, really recently into it maybe like eight months and some like stock trader guy that wants to manage <laughs> rich people's money was like hey can you send your list an email about like us managing their money because they're all orthodontists you know make good money and i was like it was like it'll be an affiliate deal we'll send you x amount it wasn't even that much it's probably like two or three hundred bucks um per person that signed up and I was like, I spammed my list with that. And I'm like, man, I should have just sold on my agency services. Make way more. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And you hit, when you, when you start to gain a little bit of traction online, you start to get people reaching out. And nowadays it's 99% no. But the first time you get people reaching out, you're so excited <laughs> yeah, you're that you want to say yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I remember I got a bike one, like a Peloton competitor. I think we both got that one. I, I sent it to you. I was like, sounds familiar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I'm, I don't think I'm going to you know, <laughs> have these guys sponsor the YouTube channel. <laughs> and it's funny. Like, why would you, why would you even try to sponsor my YouTube yeah, channel? Exactly. You know, like, we should both be seeing this as a bad opportunity, not just me. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, okay. So you get up to like really, really good money with click funnels. You've got your courses. Um, at what point did you, did you transition out of promoting click funnels or, was it was just kind of like the courses are doing well and I have a bunch of other affiliate products so I'm trying to diversify. Yeah, it just didn't make as much sense. Kind of like we talked about, I didn't do as well because now my audience wasn't business owners, it was affiliate marketers. Yeah, and Affiliate marketers, we kind of just talked about the conversion system's really easy, right? It's a lead magnet, a landing page, and some emails. Mm -hmm. And ClickFunnels is a lot more than that. And so it just didn't yeah. make sense to say, hey, here's this awesome software. Here's a software with 10,000 different things it can do. You need one of them. Go ahead and pay a thousand, you know, go and pay hundred dollars a month or whatever yeah. for that one tiny thing. And so that was kind of the transition away from ClickFunnels, where I, it just didn't make sense. Mm. And I, one of the biggest lessons I've learned along the way is like, do what's best for your audience, and you'll do better in the long run, right? Like, mm. in the, I, I think there was a period where I was trying to like force it a little, right? Like, no, no, I, ClickFunnels, I'm pushing, I'm pushing, I'm pushing ClickFunnels, and people were like they start to lose a little trust in you because like that's not the best option for us right yeah. like there's kind of like a clear-cut fact that you're doing affiliate commissions here and not giving us what's a, a better option for our situation yeah <clears throat> did you ever scale a team that was too big during this time like hire people just because you were like oh this is going to be great and we're going to scale <laughs> and then realize that was not the path no i i okay. have always been very wary of hiring Primarily because I, I feel like a lot of people in our space, especially when they do like uh, you know, Philippines, India, stuff like that, they're a little callous in the way mm. they do it, right? Like, oh, we'll, we'll scale and um, oh, it didn't work, shut the door. And then, you know, they fire 50 people, they fire that whole team like mm. overnight. And 
they tell that story five years from now, but you got to think of these like people that like lost their job overnight because you didn't do your, you know, you, you were bad at your job and, yeah. and that affected their job. And so I'm like really scared to, to let people go. I don't like to let people go or right? I feel like I get pretty close to my employees. And, um, and so I'm, I'm very wary to hire someone that I don't think I'm going to be using you for years for sure. Okay. <clears throat> and so right now, what does the team look like? I've got like a general VA and she can do everything. So she's awesome. Had had to really hunt to find her, but she can do emails, she can do video editing, she can do web design, graphic design. Like wow. she is awesome. Uh and she's kind of like the center of my business, I guess. And then I've got a, a video editor uh that does all my video editing. She can do some, but he'll do he'll do like the big stuff on my channel and everything. Mm-hmm. And that's it. I, mean, I used to have a copywriter, I used to have a, a blog writer. I uh, used to have a software guy. We, you know, we were trying to do a little software and it all kind of fizzled down to like just my core business is just creating content. And all you need to create content is a video editor and then someone to kind of manage the system. Yeah. And it's like the the Spencer Meekum model is to stumble into something that works and yeah. then just like <laughs> continue to do exactly that thing until it stops yes. working <laughs> and then do the next I thing. I shoot a lot of links. <laughs> They're just like firing things. Yeah. But yeah, in the end, it just came, I came to the realization that like, if you have an audience, you can make money in in a myriad of different ways. So mm-hmm. focus all your efforts on building an audience, and and you'll figure out the rest. Cool. Yeah, as you go. <clears throat> yeah. So, in there, I know of a couple like pretty insane stories that you have just accidentally, you know, these accidental successes that we haven't mentioned yet. Uh, one of which is the KuCoin craze, right? The yeah, I'm trying to what was it? One. The hundred thousand dollar KuCoin commission. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tell yeah. I want to hear that story, and then uh, I want to talk about Amazon influencers for a little. Okay. After that. Um. Yeah, the KuCoin one. So, oh, I'm trying to remember. It was almost the exact same as the Bitcoin story, uh, where the crypto was there was main crypto, which is like Bitcoin and Ethereum. Everyone knows that, and then there was like the the alt underworld of crypto, which is like all these weird little coins, uh, the mm-hmm. ones that people know about being like Dogecoin, right? Mm-hmm. These like puppy coins that make no sense. They're yeah. absolutely nonsensical. Like anyway, they really leave a bad taste in most, most people's mouths. But I'm uh, <clears throat> that craze is going on. Dogecoin, Shiba coin, all these coins are coming out. And so I'm like, I'm just going to go do what I did at Bitcoin, I guess. And like show people how to, how to buy Dogecoin <laughs> and Shiba coin and, uh, made some random video on KuCoin, uh, where, where KuCoin is a is a crypto exchange, and I refer. Oh, yes. Sorry, let me go back. Okay. We have to cut that. Okay, I'm telling the wrong story here. Okay, okay. <laughs> I remember that now. Sorry. Uh, so editor, just go back, and I'll start <laughs> telling my story again. Yeah. So the story with KuCoin is I was I was sending people uh, to this uh, crypto exchange called KuCoin. And you, the way KuCoin's affiliate program works is you make a small percentage of everything that you send them. So um, if I send a person to KuCoin and that person, you know, trades $10,000, well, KuCoin will probably make $500 off of that and I'll make $200 uh, of, of that, that total. And so um, I love percentage models because the sky's the limit, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so email marketing, if you're looking for a place to go, email marketing is a great start because you you pay based on how big your list is which means you can have insane commissions coming thousands of dollars in a month from one person but anyway so i'm I'm sending people to kucoin i'm making like a hundred dollars a month two hundred dollars a month just little little bits as i'm making these videos and i'm telling people to go to kucoin and sign up and that's how they can buy dogecoin and shiba coin and all these random coins that no one knows about and uh, but again it's a percentage model so you make a small percent of everything that kucoin makes off of that person forever. Wow. Um, which is still small, right? Like KuCoin's making 1% of their trading fees. You're making half of what KuCoin makes. So it's like, eh, whatever. Uh, and then one day I wake up and uh, I, I go to log into KuCoin and it shows a $42,000 commission. <laughs> and I'm like going around like, is this a mistake? Like pull the money out quick. <laughs> <laughs> but I go and I'm like digging into it to figure out what's going on. Cause I'm like, haven't even paid attention to this. And Someone at some point, right? I've been doing this about a year and a half, had gone in, they'd watched one of my little videos about how to buy some coin and they'd signed up for KuCoin. And then uh, maybe they came into a big inheritance. I don't know. Like somewhere along the lines, though, they traded $15 million in a single day on KuCoin. 
And I, you would think that I would have seen more trades like this, but it was just one day, like, bloop, big, big shoot up. It's like they, maybe they were money laundering. I don't know, because <laughs> they moved $15 million through KuCoin and then it was gone. Yeah. And I made $42,000 just like that. That's uh, insane. It was great. Yeah, it was a, yeah, it's just insane, right? And that, it, it's kind of the fun thing about affiliate marketing and just online business in general is like the highs and the lows. The highs yeah. can be just nuts, right? You're just like, like out of nowhere, just massive wins. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's funny because the the being just having a YouTube video out there on whatever will give you the weirdest, like most random yeah. opportunities <laughs> because yeah. everybody uses YouTube. And like, I remember the first time I figured this out, I was on like a, I was, I had moved to London, which was like very foreign to me that I would be able to just live in a foreign country and like still work. And then some guy that was from like Azerbaijan or something, but was living in Germany, had seen one of my videos and wanted to do a consulting call for like $200. And that was the, one of the first times I had ever done consulting. And I didn't even like set it up on Zoom. I think we literally just had a WhatsApp call and I was walking through this graveyard in London <laughs> <Great>. <laughs> and getting paid like 200 bucks for the call. And I was like, this is the weirdest yeah. thing. <laughs> and then, uh, when you start making top, like other people build the brand, you just make the video that shows them how to use KuCoin high level, whatever it is. And I get emails every day from like super high level individuals that are excited about, in my case, high level. Um, and I get a capture a lot of attention from them as well as the beginners, as well as just people all over and super cool. Um, but the, the percentage model on the, you know, something as simple as KuCoin where they don't feel like <laughs> they owe you anything. There's no bonuses you have to give. There's no recurring element to it, but you've, you've made more than I'll ever make off of a single high level affiliate. <laughs> you probably. don't know that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Who knows? Um, they pay the annual plan for, uh, what would that be? 20 years? And I'll probably beat you. The, they need that option, though. Like, <laughs> the diehard fan that just yeah. wants to yeah. blow it all. You never know. I'm sure High Level will be around in 20 years. So In, in that, I mean, if, I, if, if High Level ever added some kind of email marketing option where you're paying per subscriber. Mm. So I pushed Active Campaign for like three years um, really hard before they got bought out. And mm. But uh, same thing. I had a couple guys sign up. Nothing like the $42,000 ones, but... Um, guys with lists of hundreds of thousands of people on them and they would pay active campaign um, tens of thousands of dollars a year. And so a couple people, I think I had a someone sign up for at least a few months that I was making like 4,000 a month wow. in commissions of that one guy. And I was like, it's a legit model to just go out there, find people with big lists, get them signed up to active campaign. Like under the like if you're really good at it, like, I'll, I'll build everything for you. I'll build all the emails, everything. Mm. You just sign up under my link. Everything else is free at that point, wow. right? And you can be raking in 4000 a month for like for forever, <laughs> which is crazy. Yeah, that's insane. Um, that is the genius of high level though, because they have, they call it the blade revenue, which is we only get the affiliate commissions on the 97, 297 or 497, but they make all this extra money from the texts and emails. And so if you've ever sat and thought like, oh, <clears> 60,000 agencies, let's say on average, they're paying 300 a month. You extrapolate that out and it's, I can't remember. I did the math at 1.15 million a month, let's say. High level's not making anywhere close to 15 million a month because they're making fractions of a cent on every single text that gets sent. And there's millions of texts sent from high level uh, every single month. I don't think I ever thought through that or even realized it. <laughs> yeah. So I think they're that's the reason their affiliate program is so good because they have ways of making money elsewhere. Yeah. Um, which is pretty insane. And and that's how they can offer unlimited sub accounts and unlimited agency plans. Um, but genius on their part and would be cool if they gave us a, a cut of that, but I don't see that <laughs> happening. <laughs> it would be cool. Well, you're right. I would, if that's part of their model. Yeah. yeah. Cause imagine there's, there's some people in high level with, I think 4,000 plus sub accounts. Yes. Yeah, imagine the amount of emails and texts that are getting sent. Even if we, they give us a 1% affiliate commission on that, like, I'm sure you could, there's, if you got the right agency signed up, you'd be making 10 K a month just off of that. I wouldn't mind if they did. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to lobby for uh, that. Yeah, and let me know how it goes. Put that in. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's funny. So that's a huge win that you've had, but another one that has been pretty insane is the Amazon influencer program, right? Yeah. Um, 
I hit so if you create content, you should all be familiar with burnout, right? You you put out videos and then it's just like, oh, what am I going to talk about today? And so I was hitting a burnout phase, and I got uh, I just put a post in a Facebook group um, that I that I own. It said, "Who's got cool ways to make money?" Um, yeah, I'm I'm out. And a guy, uh, his name's John. He's like, "I I got a cool way." Hit me up in DMs, and I hit him up in DMs, and he shows me. It's called the Amazon Influencer Program, and a really really simple uh, business model where uh, if you've ever been to an Amazon product page, there's usually like six pictures that the company uploads of their product. And then there's a little six number and there's six videos. And those are videos of of the product that they call them influencers, but it's just like random people have taken, right? They got the product, they took a video of it. And I wasn't aware of this. I'm sure no one's aware of this, but if you watch that video, so you're sitting there on like a product page for a blender, you watch the video. Some guy like me is like, this blender has three buttons and chops bananas really good right like just super easy like my iphone like i'm just like selfie and iphone it right yeah you watch that video and i get an affiliate commission like like a referral commission yeah um, even though i'm not referring you right uh so he, he showed me that and luckily i think i've been around long enough to see that that was a really cool opportunity right everything else in the affiliate world is like you've got to send traffic to win you've mm-hmm. got to get a ton of traffic send it somewhere and that's how you're going to win and this is like Amazon's going to send you traffic. You're going to help them convert that traffic in the easiest way possible, which is just a video with your iPhone, and you're going to get paid as if you referred that traffic to them. Yeah. And so I, I tried that out for like three months, and it was like $5 the first month, $2,000 the next month, like $5,000 the next month. Uh, and that's like me going around my house just like demoing things, right? Like like everything, like my mic, right? I have a mic for my YouTube channel. Hey, this is the mic. This is what it sounds like. This is what it looks like. You know, here's the arm of the mic. This goes up and down. Here's my chair. Like I'm literally <laughs> just walking around, like just talking about things. Get up to multi thousands of dollars a month doing that. Yeah. And and then Christmas hits, and I I go I go mega nuts again. Like I'm seeing the opportunity here, and so I, I'm like I'm gonna start researching and buying like hot selling products and getting my video on those product pages. And I do that in December, and like I bought, a, I bought like seven Christmas trees. I bought a hot tub, bought like all the hot selling gifts that year, like electric skateboards. Like, wow, so fun! First off, literally filled a room about this big, so I've got a room in my basement, twelve by twelve, boxes floor to ceiling, filled the entire room with boxes. <laughs> it was like it was like a kid. In a, it, that month was like being a kid again in in a toy store and mm. Mr. Beast hands you a credit card. Right? He's like, buy whatever you want. And that's what I felt. He was like, I want that. I want that. I want that. Great. It'll pay for itself and more. Make yeah. a video about it. And you put it on the business card. Of course. But yeah. No, I didn't. For I, legal purposes. Wait, maybe, you didn't I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Ask my accountant. Um, but yeah, so, and it's a bit, but yeah, it's a business expense, right? Cause you're buying it for the video. Yeah. Um, anyway, so, so then I put out a, a couple of videos about that. Like this, this is the best side hustle right now, everyone. Like, and it was cool because I made a bunch of money. That was cool. It's great. But then I've probably had over a thousand people reach out. Um, that video got maybe a half million views, maybe more. Um, and I've had hundreds, if not thousands, of people reach out since then and say, "I did it. Followed your video. You're right. It was easy." You know, I had a, just yesterday a guy was messaging me, paid off one hundred fifty thousand dollars, one hundred fifty thousand dollars in student loan debt bought a house like off of wow. this influencer program right and and uh i mean i kid you not dozens of stories like that one and then hundreds where people are just like me and my girlfriend are doing it. we're making an extra two thousand a month she quit her job you know just fun things like that and and you didn't even sell a course on it you literally just made a video didn't sell a course i, I found a guy's course and so I, I made a full like this is everything i know and mm-hmm. working pretty good but um, there, there is a course you can go out and like, really, I'm sure you can make more than I am. And some people have like joined communities, bought the course mm. and are doing even better than I was at the time. But um, but yeah, it was just like a full tutorial video. And it was really cool for me. It was, it was kind of like a twist in my business of like, that was so cool, like to help that many people. And mm. it was like, I'm going to do that again. And I, I am now constantly on the hunt. Like, what is the next opportunity that good? <laughs> and I haven't found one that good since um but but it's really like a goal of mine like to say like i to do it again mm-hmm. to get that feeling like over a thousand people quit their jobs because of a video you made right yeah that's that's pretty <clears throat> insane and it's 
so needed in a niche of like top 10 side hustles and it's just like <laughs> some yahoo like dancing around talking about stuff yeah. that's legitimate perhaps but hyping it up way too much yeah and it's so i mean it's honestly hard to be a creator in that space right because you don't find an amazon influencer program every week right mm. and so you've got all this filler content it's like trying to build a subscriber base and then you find the opportunity and it's like this is the real one guys this is people pay yeah. attention to this and Sometimes it's a bummer because you're like, I think I found a real one. And then that video totally flops. And you're like, yeah. no, you all all 200,000 of you watch this video, but I need you to watch this video. Not, yeah. not that one. <laughs> yeah, that's relatable for sure. Uh, so I feel like there's, you you touched on something that's really interesting to me. And it's that the very best, best opportunities actually don't get talked about because they're so good. For example, I met this guy over the summer who's uh who's really into like travel hacking and credit card churning. But like I've I've never heard about this. Maybe you have, but it's like manufactured buying. So they'll sign up for a credit card and let's say the bonus you have to spend like ten thousand dollars in three months. They'll go buy ten thousand dollars worth of Visa gift cards, yes. get the bonus the I next week, <laughs> and then just spend all of that. But then You can he, get in trouble for this, but yeah. I have heard of it. So he's he said slowly everything has gotten so saturated and and like most companies have kind of uh cracked down on stuff like this that all the best stuff, and I quote, has gone underground. Mm. <laughs> and he this is the the craziest one. You're gonna like Go research this later. I promise you. you. I don't. He would not tell me the name of the the bank that he's doing this with. But there's a bank where you can fund it with a credit card and get all the credit card points, and then you can just pull that money back out and pay off the credit card. Yeah. And so, and and he's, I think, figured out a way to. Uh, make the points count in certain categories, even if they're not that category. So oh. like, let's say you get three, three X points on five X on ad ads, spend, yeah. yeah. Or whatever, but you're not spending it on that. He like runs it through this other <laughs> software and it codes as the three X points. I don't know if that's an opportunity or a scam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. But the, he's making, I did the math and I think it's 10,000 a month for 10 minutes of go literally walking in to his room, funding the credit card with $10,000 in the morning, pulling out the money from yesterday, paying off the credit card, and just getting the spread on the points. You don't think at some point he's going to get like <laughs> blacklisted on every bank and credit card <laughs> site in America? <laughs> he said, to be fair, that that has happened to him in a, a couple of things. And there was a there was another guy, this is at a conference, and he actually like owns a bank. Like he's starting a, they're a Silicon Valley startup and they have a, a bank and he was like, I need to hire you for consulting. So like nobody takes advantage of us because <laughs> he knows oh, yeah. exactly. It's kind of like a white collar. If you ever saw that show, like yeah. they hire He's him doing to, the catch me if you can. Yeah, model. <laughs> yeah exactly. So anyway, um, I've been trying to figure out and I feel like the only way is like events and networking, like all this stuff that's like, it's just too good. Like the influencers aren't making a, cause that he's not going to go make a YouTube video about that. Cause if he does, it's immediately going to get shut down because even if 10 people are doing that every single day, yeah, he's done for, you know? Um, so interesting. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to find those opportunities. Yeah, my goal is to find them and put them on my channel. <laughs> Expose so don't them tell all. me, don't tell me about them. <laughs> uh, Tony, if you're watching this and <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm coming for Tony. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Um, so if you were, let's say, beginning and you're trying to to get a a side hustle that is one of these best opportunities because now the amazon influencer program was great it's now kind of become saturated to a degree correct to a degree i would still i mean if you are in that in that boat i would still yeah it's still a great easy side hustle that yeah. people can start and make 500 thousand bucks a month okay way easier than surveys okay <laughs> Uh, but it's it's harder to get to that 10k 20k a month. You're not gonna hit my 20 grand December probably okay. again. Yeah. Was that your highest month with that? Yeah, that that December I was talking about. Yeah, I guess I didn't get the number, huh? So yeah. all those Christmas trees and all those toys. Spent 12 grand, <laughs> made 20 grand. Okay. But the real crazy thing is it's been residual since then. So mm. I'm just kind of like I'll make stuff when I buy it now, but pretty much out of the game. Mm -hmm. And it's residually three to seven thousand dollars a month wow. from that like initial surge in December. Yeah. And it was fun. 
Yeah. Uh, like way better than a job. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. And, and one of those, I think, uh, Travis Stevenson made a course about it and yeah. all his ads are like, this isn't a side hustle. This isn't a business. This is literally the easiest thing ever. <laughs> and he was right. It was yeah. So easy. You didn't have to buy the car. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, this is the only thing I've got my wife to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, you literally could sit down in 30 minutes and be running. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, and if you want to find out with all of the other amazing opportunities out there, you know where to find Spencer online. Um, he'll be exposing them yes. faster than you can. <laughs> I might have one right now, actually. Oh, I'm, I'm in it? the middle. I, I'm getting into TikTok shops, if you know what that is. Uh-huh. Um, I still am figuring out what it is, honestly. It's one of those where like I'm struggling on YouTube because you type in TikTok, make money, and there's like 40 different crappy videos and stuff. But it, you can do it. You can do it as an affiliate or just as almost like a drop shipping thing. But TikTok shops uh, is is a new way where people basically just watch your TikTok video and then there's like a buy now link, and you can do it as an affiliate or you can do it as a ah. as like your own product. But TikTok is still such an easy way to go viral, right? And uh, so you you make these videos just about products, right? And they, you put them on a oops, sorry on a TikTok shop, and you can. I'm seeing these people. You know, the video gets a hundred thousand views, and they get. 1,000, 1,500 sales, and getting 100,000 views on TikTok just isn't that hard. Mm. Um, so TikTok shops is one that I think is potentially going to be huge. TikTok in general, honestly, I say this coming from YouTube, and someone who doesn't really like TikTok mm-hmm. even, um, like they're making huge moves in the creator space. Like they are, they are doing so much to help creators and try to get creators to focus on TikTok. Um, I think they're going to... They're going to, if not that, um, they have like the TikTok creativity program. I don't know if you've heard about that. It's a like rev share thing. Rev share. So brands, brands that want to run ads on TikTok, right? They say, why don't you have your users make videos for us? Mm. Uh, so I think, I think the big one, I think Airbnb has done it. Maybe Uber, one of those big companies has done it. Can you just have like some random TikTok users make a video that would be like a, a UGC, right? Ad for, for Uber and it's a rev share. So they spend a million dollars on TikTok ads. I don't know exactly how the algorithm works, but you can make. Um, I think people that have that have done really well have made forty, fifty thousand dollars in a month because they made a fun video. That the, yeah. the company is like, "Yeah, that's a great ad. We're going to run paid ad spend to it, and then you're going to take ten percent of that or whatever." Wow. And, you know, big brands, big money. What a time to be alive. I know. It's like that cranberry juice guy. Did you see him? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Drinking his juice on a skateboard. Yeah. yeah. So weird. <laughs> I think I think he was like homeless before. Yeah. I don't yeah. know if he's homeless. Maybe. <laughs> or broke. One Definitely. Of the yeah. <laughs> but he just like rode around California beaches drinking his cranberry juice. Yeah. Made a video, went viral, got sponsored by the cranberry juice company, right? Yeah. And I think probably in the millions now. Yeah. And all the... All the brands are realizing that like being this faceless corporate entity is n- not helping them at all. And so I'm seeing a lot more brands making these like hilarious, yeah. like meme based content. And, and TikTok's kind of like leading that. I think if I was starting anywhere, it'd be TikTok right now. Mm. And all that, a lot of people are like, join it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, do you want to make money or not? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I remember one of your testimonials on a, on like a sales page one time that I read was like, Spencer told me to start on TikTok. I didn't want to do any dancing. Yeah. So I just made normal TikTok videos. It works. It does. It does. <laughs> no, And he had like no dancing in parentheses. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, no one wants to, yeah, no one wants to start on TikTok when they first start. And then yeah. it, I feel like it's within like a first few videos. I've heard TikTok does it on purpose. I don't know if that's real, hmm. but a video goes viral and it's like, yeah, oh, yeah. wow. Like I just got a million views. My that That was another one of my wins. We've talked about wins. Um, guy, a mentor told me to do TikTok. I had made one video, so I signed up for TikTok when it first came out because mm-hmm. I was in the space. Made one video. It was of my feet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I did my bare feet, and I said, "This is what it looks like when you work from home. This is what your feet look like." Or something. <laughs> Super dumb. Got like a hundred views. Is a terrible video. Got a couple comments from weird foot fetish guys. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> I remember reading that one. I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> what a freaky platform. That's a side hustle you can make yeah. a video about. <laughs> Dude, you could. That's a niche, niche, niche. Yeah, yeah. But uh, then I had a mentor that's like, you should give TikTok another try. I'm like, okay, go make one more TikTok video, my second TikTok video. And uh, 5 million views, <laughs> like something crazy. Wow. And again, this time I actually spent 
30 minutes looking at what was working and like, okay, I'll kind of follow what they're doing. Mm -hmm. But like 5 million views on like an accidental video that I was just like trying to learn TikTok, like how it yeah. worked, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and a blow up video. I don't Dang. think I've ever had a win like that on TikTok, which is really annoying. Yeah, they're <laughs> yeah. I, I totally believe that they they bait the front end and then yeah. <laughs> get you to keep creating content. Um one more thing I want to talk about. Well, two more actually before we're done here. One, uh, we had lunch a while back and I had made a very big crypto mistake and I had lost like not just a hundred thousand oh, dollars, yeah. but like my first one hundred thousand dollars that I had like skimped and I was like, this is the money I have saved. This is what I have to show for the last, you know, three years of my life or however long it took me to save it up. And I remember sitting across the table from you and you're like, so <laughs> I lost that last five. I've done that five times. <laughs> yes, I am heartless. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah, but was it your first hundred thousand dollars? You're like, it doesn't matter. Just go make more money. <laughs> uh, but you've had your fair share of, um, crypto losses and other mistakes oh yeah um can you share maybe one or two of the worst <laughs> um yeah let me let me think man so i, I already shared the stock market one mm -hmm. um after that when i tell you stories like looking back i sound so dumb You're like <laughs> how is this guy making money or finding any success <laughs> he's so dumb uh <laughs> But this like random guy comes to me. He gets introduced to me through someone else. He's like, we're starting a crypto fund in Australia. I have no idea who he is. No idea like if it's legit. He sends me like, here's the paperwork, but we're going to like invest your money into crypto for you so you don't have to do all the research. And I was like, that sounds nice. He's like, we know what we're doing. Don't worry. And um, so I go to the bank. That I, I'm like, I'm wiring this money to this random guy. And Chase Bank, I remember they, they actually had, it was $30,000. And mm -hmm. it, that was like some of my first money. This is a long time ago. Oh, wow. And Chase Banks, um, they like call me in. Like I go to do it and they don't just do it. They like call me in to talk to somebody like, what are you sending this for? And I like explain it and they're like, like, we'll send it. But like, are you sure? <laughs> like, like, do you understand? Like, it, I can't remember the exact conversation. But I remember being annoyed. Like, yeah, it's my money. Like send my money. And they're like, stuff like this usually doesn't <laughs> work out. Um, but I sent the 30 grand and that guy traded my money down to a thousand dollars. Like, Loss wow. after loss after loss after loss. Um, I was like, man, I could have done that. You know, <laughs> like, I couldn't have done. I could not have traded worse. <laughs> like, um, and he, he took a fee. You know, had yeah, to take yeah. his fee of the games. <laughs> <laughs> he probably still made money. It's probably true. Yeah. Um, but did that, and then, wow. Okay, that was like early, early on. That was early, early on. And so you'd think that I'd be like, wow, I better start being careful. But I. Then I get into this other company. I'm not even going to say the name of the company because I don't want to get like sued. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. But this other company that's like a, it was so big in crypto at the time, right? Like 5% a month, 10% a month, mm. we'll, we'll pay you. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so I they get into that company and I put in, I think I had $90,000. Um, that's a lot of money. <laughs> like, yeah. Anyway, I put in $90,000 and they're, they're paying you like 5% every month, which is awesome on $90,000. Like, I'm like, I'm like, I have a retirable income. From this. Yeah. And then you get that email. Like, I started, you see, like, it was like a sign the day before. It was like, we're going to pause withdrawals for a couple hours while we, like, work on maintenance or something, you know? And you're yeah. like, okay. And the next day, like, we don't have any more money. <laughs> and uh, those guys are still, it's like a year and a half later, and they're still uh, claiming, like, oh, we're, we're working on it. It's coming. They send out these updates, like, mm. we're doing this and this and this. And it's like, it's a year and a half, and you still have zero money. Like yeah. not even a percentage, but anyway, so another 90,000 down the hole in crypto. I still don't know. Like I tell people to this day, like I put in a bunch of money in the beginning. I kind of made money, got paid in crypto. I have no idea if I'm profitable in crypto or not in, the, <laughs> in like the long run. I, I could have lost hundreds of thousands. I could have made hundreds of thousands. It's impossible to know. Like crypto is just so complicated. Yeah. You know, There's more people that uh, should be willing to admit that. You know, yeah, true. a lot of your crypto influencers are probably in the same boat. Oh yeah, but they know it. Yeah. <laughs> they know that they're not profitable. I'm making money from my YouTube channel, losing <laughs> half of it on crypto, but still making more. Oh dear. Um, yeah, learn from our mistakes. Anyone watching this, like, if it, it sounds too good to be true, it is. It, unless it's the Amazon influencer program. <laughs> I was gonna say, like, I don't actually believe that. I, I actually okay. don't like that statement. For, for uh, no, I want to hear your opinion, but for investments, I would say like somebody who's like, I'm going to take your investment and make 
yeah x amount i feel like it's 99 percent of the time like you, that should be ignored yeah and i say i and i say too could be true with a caveat because that should be your mindset but at the same time i like really believe there are like little gems out there mm. and then also a lot of people use that statement it's too good to be true when there's like decent and awesome investments and they just do decent you yeah. know and like, there's really good investments out there but you're mm -hmm. so focused on your your ira mm -hmm. you know the rich people that's not what they're doing with theirs they're doing smart good investments not spencer investments but like good investments <laughs> right and so like they say it's when a lot of the, I feel like so many people say it's too good to be true. Anything beyond an IRA or, or yeah. very, very or simple. Or a nine to five job. Yeah. yeah. And like even like buy an Airbnb and how, even like real estate right now, you could still buy real estate. It pays for itself over the next 30 years and you own it in 30 years, right? Like that opportunity is not complicated. It's not a scam. Mm -hmm. It's better than an IRA. Yeah. And, and so many people are like, no, like you try to do the numbers for them. No, it doesn't like it, there's got to be a catch. And it's like, not really. Like I own five properties right now on the East Coast, and I don't spend any time on them. They all make me one to three hundred dollars a month. They are property managed. I spend maybe ten minutes a year doing the taxes on them, mm -hmm. and like that's a very real, very simple opportunity. Yeah. That when I describe to people, they still say it's too good to be true. <laughs> yeah. I remember your um, before we met in person ever um, watching some of your TikToks, and one of them was like you wearing this beanie with like your that makes your ears come out like this and then you, it's like smart spencer and like dumb spencer oh. <laughs> talking to each other and the smart one's like giving dumb one advice about like side hustles and the other guy's like you think i know how to make a website yeah like, <laughs> i don't <laughs> you're like okay well I probably just like go get a job then. that was a fun video <laughs> yeah. yeah because we like you even though 90 percent of it is too good to be true and is garbage, maybe 99, right? Yeah. Like you'll never find the gold mine if you don't search, right? The people two, 200 years ago that found gold mines didn't yeah. like walk into California and just like look around and see a gold mine. They dug and dug and dug and dug. So mm. you got to do Yeah, that's great. It's good perspective. And that brings me to my next question, which is uh, you're extremely focused on being jobless <laughs> Even more so, like like I've never moving. Described it that way. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, you you said jobless at the beginning, right? Is that the word I use? Yeah, I think so. Doesn't sound great, but <laughs> <laughs> I think I saw uh, job like, free sounds <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, free time. Yeah, free time. unlimited unlimited free time. That's it. Actually, not PTO yeah. because you're, it's your own business. But I feel like you're even you're trying to transition even out of uh, business activities that you don't enjoy. Obviously, you've probably been doing that for a while, but trying to get to a, like a stable income that doesn't rely at all on your time. What's your goal there and how are you going about it? Yeah. So first of all, I believe that I think that ever, that, that should be everyone's journey. And if you look at most of the big people, that is their journey, right? You, you've got your job or whatever. Starting your own business allows you to make significantly more, right? You're not looking at 5% raises anymore and in little investments in your IRA, you know, you, you can do well and really get paid for doing well. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like this journey of start your own business, take all this extra money, whether from selling your business or from just doing better and making more. Mm -hmm. And then the third, the last step, the, um, the, the final like resting place where you've actually made it is the investing side where, where you'll see all these people start turning into investors because that's real, real passive income and safe money. So for me, it's been a, uh, initially it was a dartboard. And you guys have heard some of my dartboard stories where it's like lose money, lose money, make money, make money, right? And I'm just throwing darts. Uh, and and it, it's kind of gotten more refined <laughs> over time. And my strategy now, uh, one, is focus a ton on real estate. As you, The more you get into real estate, the more you realize just how good it is um, on, mm -hmm. on every front, on you know, appreciation, on safety of money, um, right. you know, assets backed taxes, like everything points to real estate being a smart investment. So I focus a lot on real estate and um, my, most of my real estate investing, I don't know if this, this makes me sound dumb or smart, but <laughs> I find people that I, I know are experts in what they're doing and who I trust. And then I give them money <laughs> and then to put it in like the real estate world, right? I've got someone who's a close friend. He's built up multiple businesses. He wants to get into the franchise world, so he wanted me to invest in a franchise with him. 
He's built up multiple businesses. I know he knows what he's doing. I trust him implicitly. I would give him a hundred grand and and know um, that he's going to take my money seriously, right? Mm-hmm. And and so I do, that's kind of like my strategy now is I'm just waiting. I'm networking and waiting for people that I really trust who say they can do something and I, they, you know, they've got a background that shows, yes, they can do that. So I'm investing in a car dealership with a friend as well. Mm. He owned car dealerships for like seven years. Again, I would, I would give this guy's $100,000, no questions asked because I trust him that much. And he's saying, I found this opportunity I want I, in, in the car dealership space, right? And, yeah. and so I'm giving him money for that. Um, and, then, and then same thing in real estate. There's, there's a couple of real estate guys that <clears throat> do like rehabs and stuff that I invest with. But um, it's, for me, it's just because I'm still in the business world, I'm not an expert at a lot of these things. It's just become a matter of connecting with the right people who I really trust and who really know what they're doing and take my money seriously and then giving them my money. And that's been working a lot better. No, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I like that approach. And it's such a simple way to explain it. Um, I, I heard, I saw a piece of content you made where you compared like W-2 income to W-2 investments, which is like your IRA and your stock market, just, you know, VTI and chill type <laughs> uh, investing is is like having a W-2 job. It's good. You can count on it. Like it's going to be solid. Oh, yeah. But there's also like entrepreneurial investing, which is what you're doing here, finding experts in their space and then taking the money that you've made in your expert space and kind of diversifying mm-hmm. it across, right? Yeah. And it really is like initially I thought, well, that's it's, it's got to come at a catch of being more risky, right? Mm-hmm. And, and there's a point where I think you hit that, but I don't... I don't think I've hit that point yet. I think you can go pretty far into investing at a very in a very safe way, right? You can invest in things that are asset back that um, really are smart investments, but still crush an IRA. And and like when I like again, I came to my model, if you could call what I just described a model. Nine ninety seven course dropping from, soon. Yeah, yes, <laughs> let's sell this sucker. But uh, just came to it from experience of right, like I'm looking and. The thing you have to realize about investing is if the investment has a possibility of going to zero, that's a huge loss. Like it better have insane potential returns to match that. And a lot of times I think in the beginning, me and other people, right? Like I'm getting into that crypto fund, right? Like that's someone I don't know and don't trust. So it's got a good possibility of going to zero, of them stealing my money or being terrible at it. And 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 the, the potential highs just didn't outweigh that. I right, didn't make didn't make sense for that, and and same thing with this crypto one, and and most of the, I mean, I've come, you probably have too, somewhat disenfranchised with crypto because the chance is always it could go to zero. Mm-hmm. And if it doesn't go to zero, you're probably gonna get hacked, and so it'll go to zero anyway. Then you're still gonna have to pay taxes. On it, right? <laughs> yeah, or uh, um, three hours capital. Yeah, yeah, yeah or spend like <laughs> over leverage themselves and screw the entire market. Or time capital. I just spent like six hours yesterday trying to figure out how to like move. I got all this crypto that I've. I've earned money on anyway, and I could not figure out how to sell it, like liquidity issues and moving mm, it around. And yeah. you're in the US, so you got to use VPNs. And it was like six hours of my time just to sell my dang crypto. <laughs> it's yeah. so frustrating. Yeah. Um, but anyway, um, what was I saying? <laughs> uh, investments that can go to zero should yeah. be considered. Like you should almost never even consider it. Or if it does, it's got to be like, okay, but the, the potential payout is crazy high. And I'm only going to do a little bit. Mm-hmm. Right, because things like in real estate in the business world, like they don't go to zero, right? Real estate doesn't go to zero, mm-hmm. um, and you can still do really good, solid returns in in the right places, especially if you're willing to put in work. And so, yeah, real estate business, uh, I invested in, um, like a ski resort, mm. things like that, right? Like the returns in the ski resort are going to be, if all goes well, like three to five x, which is mm-hmm. pretty good in five years, right? Like. You're never your IRA is not going to three to five x yeah. in in that many years. Yeah, it'll two x in ten years. That's the yeah, way. yeah, yeah. If you double in ten years, you you should be pretty happy. Yeah, um, but it's still backed by this ski resort that has a, they already own half the mountain. Now they're building, you know, they're expanding, and I'm just mm-hmm. investing in that expansion. And it's you can go look at the appraisals and stuff. Like the numbers are all there. It's a pretty safe investment, mm-hmm. hundred times safer than anything I could ever do in crypto, and it's still five to one, which is like not crypto ish numbers, but Numbers you should be happy with. Yeah. I was talking to my brother the other day. My my assistant is from Tunisia. Tunisia? Yeah. Oh, wow. So it's it's below Italy and Africa. And one of the big thing there apparently is investing in olive trees. Oh. And I just, it's this, 
I had never heard of that. So I sort of like laughed at him and he's, he's going to watch this. So he's, he'll message me on Slack right <laughs> after this, I'm sure. But like, I was just like, no way, like no way it's olive trees that you're investing in. And he's like, yeah, like uh, my neighbors, you know, they do pretty well. And the, the way that I know is because they have a lot of olive trees. <laughs> like it just, oh. it seems fake. Um, coming it's like, from where it's like you're in, your money is olive trees. It's how yeah. they measure your yeah. wealth. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but apparently it's nice because it's fairly passive. Like the olives grow, but you don't have to do much. And then there's like harvesting season where you have to manage that. And then you huh. sell the olive oil. And I was telling my brother this and I was expecting him to be like, oh, that's funny. He's like, no, that's actually really cool. The people I have the most respect for it when it comes to investing are people that own natural resources like land, like real estate, like uh, orchards, things like this, because they're it's actually like generational wealth when you can have a, a plot of land with like things that produce goods that will always be in demand. And I was like, wow, it's actually like super interesting. Right. It's smart and it feels better to invest in that stuff, right? Like, mm. oh, I'm providing like meat for yeah. this city or something like that. Like it feels better to invest in that than crypto where it's like, even if I made a hundred grand, I probably made a hundred grand because someone else lost a hundred grand, right? Yeah. Like that's kind of how investing in, in yeah. that kind of stuff works. So I, spot on, like it feels better. Like we, we, this ice cream franchise I said we we're investing in, mm -hmm. it just feels better. Like, oh, it's a real business that's like providing something and people are happily going in and getting ice cream. You know, mm. there's just a little bit different feel to it. Yeah, that's cool. So you you will just basically accumulate cash until one of these opportunities comes across your desk, and then you just do a lump sum. And I'm ready. Of yeah, over a hundred thousand dollars each time, right? Yeah. So I I, I try to like hundred thousand right now is kind of like my amount that I like to do. It's mm -hmm. like not not an amount that could devastate me, mm -hmm. but could still do pretty good. Um, and maybe that changes over time, but that's where I'm at right now. And in the beginning, it was like a hole burning in the pocket, right? Like, I've got $100,000. Where's a good investment? Where's a good investment? Oh, you've got one? Good. Like, take my money, you know? Mm. And that that's where a lot of those bad investment choices came in. So now it's just like, it's so much better to not lose money. <laughs> it is. Yeah. I'm not sure what I'm saying, but you get the idea. I would yeah. rather just not lose it than, yeah. than may, maybe make a little bit. Yeah. Okay. And um, what's the goal? Like, let's say you get to 10K, 20K a month, and it's... You don't have to do anything. You've got random affiliate products that you made videos years ago that are still paying you. And those aren't like the way I see affiliate income is like it could disappear at any time, but it's really nice and probably won't. But it's not like it's backed by a house or, or some real estate. Yeah, you know? That's why investments is what I consider the safest one because yeah. now you've got real backing. Yeah. So, like, I'm sure you've got you've got passive income from affiliates, but I don't know if you count that. Um, but these these types of investments that are pretty much like this isn't going away and it's monthly. What's your goal in terms of income there? Uh, so I've always said like a goal of just a six figure passive income. Like we're pretty much there. Mm -hmm. And so I'm kind of like in this awkward, like, I don't know, <laughs> you know, like mm -hmm. I don't have a goal beyond that. My goal has always been a six figure passive income and a cabin. I've always wanted a cabin and okay. um, we're, we're cabin hunting right now. So right. hopefully at some point we get the cabin, but we've got the money for the cabin and then, <clears throat> which will, by the way, Airbnb itself out. So the cabin will be in a place that's, it's an asset still, right? Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, it then becomes, I guess, the search for meaning, <laughs> right? Like, like, now we're still making money. Mm -hmm. We've got excess of what we need. And like, what do you do with it? Do you start something charitable? Do you create some kind of trust and, and run something like that, right? Like, that, that's kind of where I'm stuck right now, so... Mm -hmm. You've caught up to what you've caught up to the current time. <laughs> Got it. We'll have to go. The the place that we're doing this podcast is below a counseling service. Yes, so that's next. We'll have to just like walk around there and <laughs> sit you down. I don't feel like I have a purpose in life. <laughs> Someone help me. <laughs> counseling for rich people. Yeah. <laughs> um, for for affiliate marketers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's cool, and it's good to know that like for anyone listening the that never stops. Like when I was making my agency was at like 30 K a month and I had a partner and like a couple employees, I wasn't keeping all of that, but like I was at 10 K and it was fairly passive. I was like, what is even life? Like, it doesn't feel real. Like I could, I can just like fly. I went to Mexico and I remember just like walking around Mexico, like not thinking that I was in a real life because of how <laughs> quickly the money had come, which felt like a lot of money at the time. It And it is like for, just living a, a pretty amazing life. And then 
you get to the next level where it's like, oh, it's like 20K and that's probably not going away. And then you get to the next level and every single time you have a little bit of an existential crisis. Yeah, yeah, because your goal, like in the beginning, everyone's goal is money most, 99% of people, right? And even when they say like, no, I want to like, I want to help, you know, 100 Mm -hmm. people do this, like they want money. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) They have a coach telling them that they need to like make that a mission statement and yada, 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 but they just want money, which is fine, right? Like it's like the the hierarchy of needs, right? Like that's what you need right now most. Mm -hmm. And then you get that, it's like, well, now I need a purpose. Now I need to wake up, feel good and have something that I'm like striving for. And so... Yeah, it, 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 it will always be there. Got it. How do you know when you're ready to transition to the investing side? Like when you when you should stop focusing on just growing the income and focus on diversifying into... Oh, like reinvesting in your business? Yeah, yeah. St- stop reinvesting so yeah. much in the business and maybe take some out for other stuff. I don't know. For me, f- I think it's just going to be natural, right? Like don't force the reinvestment in your business. So if you're still seeing opportunities, it's obvious you're in your own business, right? You 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 know, oh, this is a good one. But I think sometimes we're like, we feel forced. Like, I got to grow. I can't figure out how to grow. And so I'm going to start throwing darts at walls. And maybe I'm going to hire someone and see if this works, right? And like, if you're forcing it and you don't have this clear vision where you're like clearly seeing an opportunity, then I think it's smarter to start pulling on the investment side. And then maybe eventually you see another opportunity. Um, but but the biggest thing I would say is just don't f- don't force that or you'll probably lose money. Okay. Do you feel like your growth has been, does it feel fast to you or does it feel insanely slow? Crazy fast, especially because I, I live in, an, like in my neighborhood, there's a lot of like dentists and doctors yeah. and like when I hear their stories, I'm just like, oh, that is terrible. <laughs> like that was like three decades of pain. Yeah. And then I get guilty like, oh yeah, mine was, mine was hard, but it was only like four or five years, you know? Yeah. There's just a lot more potential for speed on the internet. Like growth can be much faster. Yeah. And you don't start eight hundred thousand dollars in the hole you don't start in the hole you don't start eight years of school before you yeah. get yeah just yeah so many different yeah things shout out to the healthcare professionals yes. out there that are willing to do that because we are the lazy ones that are not <laughs> exactly lazy is probably the <laughs> we're investing in businesses though so yeah. you know, it's benevolent in some way no but i, I do always say that i if I had one skill, it's finding easy ways to make money mm-hmm. <laughs> to find the easy route in, in general in life it's just like the easiest way to get to a goal yeah it doesn't have to be so hard no and that could be a skill that could be a detriment i don't know no you that's decide. that's cool and it's a it's it's like what you're saying about the you initial your initial like reaction to it's if it's too it sounds too good to be true it probably is was like no don't do that because you're thinking of all the beginners out there who are gonna shy away from the you know five hundred dollars a month that they could be making on some random YouTube video that they yeah. make one day because they just think like, oh, it's it's a waste yeah. of time. I should just go to school for 10 years. And I still get scam comments on my Amazon influencer video, right? Which is like, look at the other comments. There's like a thousand people all saying this worked. I'm making money. And and then there's that guy that's like, scam. Yeah. And it's like, oh, why did you even watch the video? Like, <laughs> there is no changing your mind. So why are you looking at this video? Yeah. Just to comment scam. Like, <laughs> I posted one on my my Facebook this year on my birthday, I got, I like woke up to this message on my birthday. and was like, you, sir, are a parasite con man to mankind. <laughs> <laughs> and my, my wife's like, I don't know how you handle that stuff. Like, I'm so like, she started an Instagram for her. She's a school teacher. And so she was sharing like best, you know, uh, books for kids and got like one hate comment and was like, I can't handle this. <laughs> and, um, I think you just realize like life's kind of what you make of it. And you, you get out what you put into it and those those people are probably just having a hard time elsewhere and yeah no yeah. no normal person does that you know yeah. these people that read these like just insanely rude comments you're like no one normal <laughs> in a normal state of mind would just go do that and yeah. so like there's a problem with you yeah and i've had the same way like I, usually now you're saying something i laugh them off i try to leave sarcastic comments Every once in a while, it's a bad day, having a bad day. <laughs> I happen to read the comment on my phone while like I'm going through a bad day. And it's just like, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. <laughs> You're the worst. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes I manage to like, no, come on, dude. And then every once in a while I post it. And then like the rest of the day, I just feel bad, you know, mm. versus if I just left something sarcastic, like you keep doing that, you know, <laughs> whatever yeah. works for you. And yeah, I would feel much better if I hadn't. Yeah. Good. Wise words. <laughs> um Leave us with one last piece of wisdom from your your years online. If somebody's a beginner trying to get started, 
give us a, a mindset nugget that would help them? Um, yeah, wait, when it comes to mindset, I, I always feel like there's like two types of people. There's the the people that get stuck in the learning loop and the people that get stuck in the applying loop. You can probably see me talk about this. The people that get stuck in the learning loop are the people that love the idea of all this stuff. I know a lot of people like this, like that are like personal family and friends, right? They love to talk to me about it. They love to watch videos about it, podcasts. This is a podcast, so I, <laughs> I can say that, but a lot of it's like the podcast only crowd. They just listen to like mm. all these podcasts while they're doing stuff. And uh, they get stuck in that learning loop and they never actually go apply. So they've got all this like generalized knowledge, mm -hmm. but it never benefits them at all. It's like, oh, that someday, you know. And then there's like the applying loop. And this is me where I'll go watch like a three minute YouTube video. I'm like, I'm smart. I can do that. Yeah. And then I just go like blow money and trying it. Right. Hence me losing money a yeah. lot of times um, where it's just like I want to learn through my own experience. And it takes me a long time and I lose a lot in that process. Mm. And so if you can find like this nice balance between I'm learning and as soon as I learn something new, I go try to apply it and then I go back into the learning, right? And I, the, the application is kind of like the cement, the cementing of learning. It's taking that knowledge and making it wisdom, right? Like mm -hmm. where you actually are internalizing it. Um, so if you can get good at doing that, I feel like you will always succeed. Um, but if you got to figure out what kind of person you are and then break out of that specific mold and do both smart thanks man this is awesome that's it that's the only nugget i have so. <laughs> appreciate it